Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to easily Queen Charge Lalo your way through Legends League. Now, the idea behind Queen Charge Lalo is ultimately not to have to be great at Lalo. So the real key to success here is to get as much value as you can from your Siege Machine, from your King, from your RC, and of course it's a Queen Charge, so your Queen as well. And your Queen is typically the real MVP here. Although, I have to say, with the introduction of the Flame Flinger, ooh, I don't know, I don't know, she's got competition. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk you through an initial attack. So I'm going to talk you through this one. This one's an FC. I know we're talking about Legend League hits primarily, and I've got a few good replays for you, don't get me wrong. But I feel like FCs are also a great way for me to sort of manipulate the bases that we're getting, just so I can give you really good examples of, uh, of how to execute this attack. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do, the usual thing, we're going to talk you through the process here of how we break down this base, and we'll watch the attack in full so you've got an idea of how it actually works in practice. Okay, hopefully that sounds good to you. Cool. So what we're going to do, guys, I'm going to talk you through it kind of loosely, because I don't want to go into every minute detail, but I'll just talk you through the high-level steps that we followed here to break it down. Okay, so first things first, we've got to concentrate on that Town Hall. We do have a Flame Flinger and primarily I will use Flame Flingers with this attack, although sometimes I may switch it up and use a Stone Slammer. It definitely pays with this attack to have the Flame Flinger, the Stone Slammer, the Blimp and the Log Launcher all available to you every time you go into a Legends hit. That way you're pretty much ready for any kind of circumstance. Okay. Anyway, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to use the Flame Flinger for that Town Hall takedown because, well, it's kind of easy. It's left itself really open here. So we're going to drop the Flame Flinger dead at 9 o'clock over here. And, uh, yeah, easy. So Flame Flinger will take out everything in this compartment. We may need to use our Skeleton spell to activate the Town Hall. But so what? Well, that's what we bring it for, guys. And if you're wondering why we bring an Invis as well as a Skelly spell... It's if you've got the Town Hall and you really want to activate it and you've got multi infernos all around it, you can invis those skellies similar to a skelly donut to get that guaranteed activation on the Town Hall. You may wonder why we don't bring a Quake, and it's just because you can use those skellies and that invis in other areas of the attack if you need to. So it's more versatile than just taking a Quake in. Or well, that's what I found anyway, and I'm not going to lie guys, I got this attack from, uh, I believe it was Exorcist of Tribe Gaming was using it in Legends League. So uh, yeah, I'm just following his lead and it kind of works. So anyway, Flame Flinger doing its thing over here, taking all that out, and we're going to charge our Queen inside here. And take out everything here, everything beyond the wall, and the Clan Castle as well. Okay, so that's basically this a large chunk of base gone. That's that gone. We're also going to be sending our RC in through here. So RC can take out everything in that part and move on and hopefully take out some more over here. And what does that leave us with, guys? It leaves us with a more or less a little bit of a deviation. So maybe a little bit of a deviation here. More or less a straight line through the base. Now you notice I've not used my king. When I actually did this FC, I kind of forgot to send my king in. Sort of swagged him, so I just let him walk down the outside here. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, you know, it, it didn't really matter too much. We had the three star anyway. And uh, yeah, that's typically it, guys. So you'll use your rages mostly for your queen charge. You can, if you've got any spare, use them for the Lalo as well. They're a great acceleration spell. And also, of course, if you're looking to try and take down big heavy structures like the eagle artillery or scatter shots quickly rages can also help there too okay so that's enough of a uh, basic intro to the attack so let's press play and we'll just watch it in action let's get to that yellow line we don't need that anymore so flame fling is down over at nine o'clock it's gonna take out the archer tower it'll take three hits technically to take that archer tower down i say technically because if it didn't fire that third hit the archer tower would still go down anyway but uh, yeah, it fires the third one anyway, whatever, no big deal. So Queen is now going to take out that Defending King. We're going to wall break open that compartment there, leading in towards the Scatter and Expo. And the Queen's going to be able to just push her way through. So Flame Flinger's doing its thing. It's taking some damage. We had to kind of protect it there. 
we uh, had a couple of little surprises hitting our flame flinger. Not great, but whatever. As long as you can keep an eye on that, and it's something that I'm sure if you guys have been using the flame flinger, you'll be kind of used to this happening. Little things crop up. Maybe your flame flinger will target the wrong building. I don't know. I don't know. It's not perfect. The AI on it kind of makes up for its OPness by balancing it out and making it a little bit less effective. Okay, so Queen's done her job, we've got the RC moving in, we're going to freeze up that single Inferno just in time to save the Queen ability and she's going to continue to press through. CC comes out, that caught me off guard, didn't expect it to be a super minion rocket loon CC, that's one of the worst CCs to go up against. But by using the Queen ability, a freeze and the poison, we're getting through it okay. The Town Hall didn't quite go down to the Flame Flinger, but we've got our balloons and our Dragon Rider moving in. I did have to drop a freeze in to make sure it went down. And, yeah, things are just going well from here. Things are just moving smoothly. So we have actually taken down that core multi. Kind of forgot that I did that when I talked through the initial plan. So the funneling that we've made here is actually even cleaner than I thought it was. Now we're looking at Lalo deployment here. You'll notice that I'm dropping them in in batches. So I'm dropping them in in batches of four or five. Just because it's four or five balloons per defense to take them down, typically. Um, when you come in, when you're looking at things like the Eagle Artillery, it takes a lot more, but whatever. But we've got a big wave of balloons moving through the base now. We sent our headhunters in under the Eternal Tome. That's most of the time what you're going to be doing. Um, on rare occasions, you might still have your headhunters left at the end of the attack because the Queen Charge has dealt with everything, uh, in which case they're a decent enough cleanup troop. But you can see it, guys. We are walking through this base here. We've got a big batch of balloons there. We've got an invis and we've got a rage spell still to drop in. King is tanking for the cannon and archer tower. He's, it'd be great if he was tanking for that scatter shot, wouldn't it? But you know what? You can't have it all, guys. So I made the initial, in, initial defenses invisible. Couldn't say initial then. Just so I could rage those balloons through to the scatter shot. That was the main threat for me. I probably could have got away without doing that, to be honest. But, you know what, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of balloons left at the end of it. And that's what we did, guys. So that is a three-star and a textbook example of how to Queen Charge Lalo using the Flame Flinger. Such an effective strategy. And if you follow the same sort of steps, breaking down the base, trying to create that linear path, you can't go far wrong. Now, I've got one more friendly challenge for you guys, and the reason why I did this in a friendly challenge rather than Legends is because I just didn't come across any ring bases in Legends. I don't know why. Weird. But I didn't. Anyway, let's press play, and we'll talk through the attack as we go on. So, what we're looking to do here, guys, is create a funnel at 3 and 6, and get that uh, queen driven in between it to try and get her into the core. So Flame Flinger goes down at 3, we've got the Queen, she's walking up from 6 to try and get a little bit more value. Notice I'm not dropping the healers in immediately. I wait until she's moving in to drop the healers, because I want them moving in as far behind her as possible, so they're not getting into range of any defences. We've got a partial CC pull with that second wall break, Queen can easily pick those off, and I'm aware that it's only a partial pull, so I don't deploy my poison yet. I'm waiting, I'm holding on to that. Rage goes down, Queen's a little bit low on health, so that'll bo uh, bust her up. Bust her? Buff her back up again. Words, Big Veil, speak them. Poison goes down and easily dealt with. Now the RC will come in to finish that path at 6 o'clock, so we're in danger of the Queen still walking down towards 6. So the RC goes in, when the air defence is gone, the Baby Dragon comes in too. And now, where's the Queen going to go? She's got nowhere to go but inside. I drop my skeleton spell in front of the warden just to give the queen a little bit of extra tanking as she moves in through that initial part of the base. RC's days are numbered. Notice we also sent a king in as well over at 2.30 just to try and complete that pathing and also get a little bit of a cheeky takedown on that defending RC. Queen, this is where the attack really is made here. So the queen charge is in a real dangerous spot here, but we use an invis, we've got the rage down as well, and that's going to allow the queen to get buffed back up to full health without anything targeting us. So that is worth its weight in gold. Beautiful freeze spell, so if you've got three defensive structures right next to each other, you can easily three, uh, freeze all three of them by dropping the freeze directly in the middle of that middle defense. You notice the uh, flame flingers pop. We're not too worried about that. It does actually mean that we get that uh, balloon baby, not baby dragon, dragon rider coming out of it and helping a little bit of the cleanup effort. Queen is still charging on through. Notice we save the ability until quite late on in the queen charge. 
just because I I, I kind of wanted to make sure we had enough firepower going through the back end of this core. We've got the balloons in, they got deployed a little bit earlier on. It was the same deployment that we talked about before, dropping them in in batches. They've kind of clumped up now just, well, basically because it's like a line of defences, isn't it? We haven't got that spread of defences for them to follow. Um, I mean, that's not a bad thing, though. It's not a bad thing at all. The only way that could really negatively impact us is, is if those balloons pick up a ton of red air bombs, which isn't likely to happen working around the outside. Red air bombs in a base like this... If you've got a concentration of them, it's likely to be somewhere in the core. But that's that's done, guys. That's done. Through funneling the queen in, managing that queen charge perfectly, and building that straight line from 12 towards 9, as we did here, you've got a really simple 3-star on what I'm sure a lot of you guys have considered to be a really tough ring base in the past. I'm sure you've hit this one before. It's not an uncommon ring base. Anyway, that's enough FCs for now, guys. We're going to move on to some legend hits now. So you can see this attack with no prior planning and all of these attacks done on the spur of the moment. And here's a base that it's probably a little bit unusual in Legends, to be honest, but we still figured out a way of taking it down by following the same formula as before. Flame Flinger over at 9 o'clock. So that's going to clear out the 9 o'clock compartment and the Eagle. And what we're looking to do here, guys, is just build that really nice linear path through the base. So, Flame Flinger at 9, Queen dropped in over at 2 o'clock. And the reason why we dropped the Queen in over there is because I saw an opportunity for the Queen to take that Town Hall down over the wall and progress in and get a ton more value. So this is another thing that you need to look out for. If you've got a really easy to access Town Hall, something that your Queen can reach with just a little bit of manipulation, you cannot go far wrong, guys. And look, Town Hall's gone, Flame Flinger's working its way in towards the Eagle Artillery, and the Queen is doing magical, magical work over on the uh, 1, 2 o'clock side. Okay, so Queen Charge looking a little bit in trouble here. A little bit. Mainly because I didn't manage that CC very well. It was a Headhunter Super Minion CC. Not uncommon in Legends, so I should have really done better with that, to be honest. Maybe you'll think I'm being hypercritical of myself, but I'm not. I, I genuinely think I should. King moves in at 3 o'clock, takes out the remaining defences there. And he's going to now work his way through and tank for that scatter shot as the Queen does even more work. And look at the pathing that we've actually built here, guys. Just take a second to look at it. We've got a really nice line working through here. That's a really good Lolo path already. And we've got a minute and 10 seconds left, so Lolo's going to have to go in. RC, I like to sometimes send the RC with the Lalo. If there's not that much additional RC value available, if I send her in solo, which there isn't on this occasion, I like to send the RC in with those Lalo troops. And it acts as um, an extra defensive takedown, but it also allows you to pick off air skellies and also take out defending heroes a lot easier than you would otherwise be doing. So the RC is working through with those loons. We've got no spells left from that invis that we just dropped in um but yeah you can see the base is already pretty much gone we built that beautiful pathing working through the base when you're looking at linear pathing it doesn't have to follow really obvious so i'm going to pause it here it doesn't have to follow really obvious straight lines like this one or like this one or like this one you get the picture it doesn't have to in this case we kind of did a straight down the middle path and it's a straight line, so it still works. I know it's easy to be led by wall position, but just try your best to ignore those walls when you're doing your Lalo part. And uh, as long as you can do that, guys, you cannot go far wrong. But we've got the balloons, we've got the dragon riders all pushing through. The dragon rider we have in this comp, a little bit unusual to have it in a Lalo composition. It means sacrificing five balloons, but oh my lord, it is so good. It's such a good replacement for those five balloons because of the additional tankiness it brings. And of course, the additional firepower that it brings. Now, I've heard this base being considered to be one of the best Legends bases out there at the moment. But again, I'm going to show you how to take it down, guys. And I left it quite to the wire here. I was, again, late on my Lolo deployment because ugh, I forget these things, guys. You do have to keep an eye on the clock. A minute is barely enough time to get a Lolo done. You want to be leaving yourself maybe a minute and a half if you can. But uh, I know it's easy to get carried away with that Queen Charge. And this is actually an example of a Legend hit with the Queen Charge Lolo, 
with the Dragon Rider thrown in, of course, with a Stone Slammer instead of that Flame Flinger. So it's an extra dimension, an extra way of taking down bases, and it's just another way of looking at the attack. So Flame Flinger's played such a big part in the attacks I've shown you so far. I thought it was only right that we included this one as well, just so you've got the full picture and you've got an idea of how you can use other siege machines to still get the job done really effectively. So Queen taking out the Town Hall, she's just charging her way through here. We're having to use Invis and Freezes to get her through there, mainly because that single Inferno was really nasty behind the Town Hall. Uh, so we've taken out the Town Hall comp, basically. That's pretty much all gone. The King is moving in and taking out the Scatter comp over at 10. And again, you can see that line that we're building here, guys. The line that we're building, it works its way so far down here. That's the pathing that we've built already. And we're not even quite finished yet. The Queen Charge is still going on. We've got a minute and a half left on the clock. We haven't sent our RC in yet. Now it comes in. And now the Lolo gets dropped in. Okay, so I did send my Lolo in for like a minute and 24 left. Maybe about 10 seconds earlier would have been better. There was honestly no reason not to send the Lolo in earlier there. By delaying it like I did, I kind of let myself down a bit. So we've got the Balloons pushing through with the Stone Slammer. I don't worry too much about multi infernos locking onto my balloons, mainly because by this point in the attack you don't have too many spells to deal with it, but there are much bigger threats in the base than just the multi inferno guys. It's much better to hold your eternal tome when you're approaching things like a scatter shot, um, if you're looking at approaching a defending queen or RC and you've got your headhunters moving in. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying multi infernos aren't dangerous, of course they are, but they're not the biggest threat is really the message I'm trying to deliver here. But you can see here guys, we've ripped the base apart here, we've built that pathing, we've got those balloons working all the way through. Now another thing that you really need to pay attention to, and actually probably the main reason why this one took so long and why it nearly time failed, clean up. Clean up has to go in early and it's always advisable to try and send your clean up just after you drop your main Lalo deployments. And don't just, because again, this is something that I do, which I probably shouldn't. Don't just drop all of your minions in one place behind the loons. Spread them around a little bit. Let them work away at chipping away at these external structures and then move their way in naturally as the Lalo is working on. Typically, if your Lalo has been deployed correctly, you don't need to worry about your minions getting picked off and targeted because those balloons will be well ahead of them. But yeah, early cleanup drop. That is actually really important, and if there's anything you're going to take away from this, that has to be one of the key lessons. And what a surprise, Big Veil vale with an attack with just under three minutes left on the clock again. So, yeah, I know, I'm careless, but you know what? I'm making these mistakes so you guys don't. You can learn from them. <laughs> Honestly, I do time fail fairly regularly with this because I am so forgetful when it comes to really key elements here. But we've got the Queen dropped in at six. And the king is just sort of leading away. He's tanking for her, but also trying to clear out these structures ahead of the queen. So what I'm looking to try and do is drive this queen inside the base. I wanted to move in and I wanted to take out the expo, the single inferno, the town hall, and ideally move in and take out that multi inferno that's just in the core over here. And you can see the path I'm looking to build guys already. So I'm not going to insult your intelligence by drawing it out. In fact, just think now, I'm going to pause it. What pathing do you think we're looking to build here? Just get it in your mind, think about it, remember it, and you'll see it soon enough. See if we have the same idea, same same thoughts around how to break this base down. So Queen taking out the single, she's going to take out the multi as well. And there we go. Beautiful. So the uh, Town Hall unfortunately didn't get char uh, targeted by the Queen. Fortunately, the Flame Flinger does come in clutch here. So we're sending in the Flame Flinger a little bit later than I probably otherwise would have done. And the Flame Flinger is going to work through that Town Hall instead. So no big deal. You'll notice I sent in a couple of balloons as well and froze the Town Hall up. Because I'm aware that those healers are well within range of that Giga Inferno. And I really did not want to lose my healers at this point. Okay, now you can see the lolly path in. So we're going to be working our way up from 8 o'clock towards the top side. If you're wondering why we're coming in from that side... Uh, there's no real dead set reason, guys. There's no specific reason for it. I would say if I had to give a reason, it's because we've got the queen closer to that side. 
And yeah, the Queen, I would consider it more of a threat than the RC just because she's got a higher fire rate. So we're getting these balloons pushed through. The Eagle is kind of central as well, by the way, guys. So the Eagle is also something that if you if you're given the choice between wallowing in Eagle side or not wallowing in Eagle side, you want to send that Lalo into the Eagle side. You do. You do. And if you're wondering why, well, i got to be honest, guys, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Why are you wondering why? You want that eagle gone. Those shots that it delivers are devastating. It is nasty, and it can absolutely crush all of your balloons very, very quickly. Now, we're not finishing this attack with any balloons, but we are finishing it with our queen. Our flame fling is only just about going to pop right at the end. And we've got our queen ability. This queen is on full health. So she's ready to go for the next attack. No problems there. And you know what? This isn't considered a failure, guys. If you end the attack and you've only got a few troops remaining, don't consider it a bad thing. You got the job done. And those balloons are there to do some cleanup. They're there to do a job, take out defenses. If your queen has to clean up the rest of the base, then so be it. It's not a big deal. You still won. You still tripled him. Or her. Or them. Whatever. You still tripled the person you hit. And another different base style, guys. So what we're going to do here, again, Flame Flinger. This is typically what you'll use, guys. I know you've got the other Siege Machines to be versatile. Flame Flinger is what I would say is your primary Siege. So good bit of advice is to request it in your clan castle to make sure you've always got one. Don't get caught out without a Flame Flinger and a Legend hit with this, uh, with this comp because you may be in for a bad ride. So... Flame Fling is doing a nice job down at 6 o'clock. Baby Dragon doing some beautiful cleanup in behind. And we're going to force our Queen inside here. So Queen's going to move in. We're going to break open the wall to try and get the Queen inside towards the Town Hall as well. So CC gets pulled out. Poison gets dropped in on top of the Super Minions. And we freeze up the Headhunters. Nice. Textbook. Really textbook takedown of the CC. Easily done. And without too, too much fuss. So now the queen, where's she going to go? Is she going to move into that wall that we've opened up? You decide, guys. Is she going to move in? Nah, she's not. Because that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Fortunately, fortunately, we do have ways and means. We do have another three wall breakers. We've got a king giving our queen a helping hand as well. So we're not, we're not particularly struggling at this point. We did lose Queen Ability there. There's not much I could have done about it without wasting a spell. And honestly, at this point, I wasn't too concerned about losing that Queen Ability. So now you're looking at the path in that we're looking to build here. We're looking to try and build a beautiful path going in a straight line. And it's already coming in, guys. I've sent the Lolo in early while the Queen is still going. And this is actually a really smart way to do things, guys. And it, it does require multitasking. But if you can get that lolly moving while the charge is still going on while it's still in full effect you will get maximum uh, efficiency when it comes to time so lolly's working through the base queen's going to take out that multi inferno we still have our rc ability we still have the tome that's just gone off there and you'll notice the rc is working with the lolo here so this is something again that i did talk about it's something i like to do if we don't have any standalone value for that rc um but yeah, it, it just adds an extra dimension to the Lalo, and we have absolutely wiped that base out. Now, my, my healer's kind of got wiped there right at the end, but the Queen, she's on full health. We're not too concerned. We've got a handful of balloons left moving into the final defense, and the Queen is just doing a little bit of cleanup duty right now. And there we have it, guys. Another three-star in Legends with this beautiful Queen Charge Lalo variation. Link is in the description of the video, by the way, guys. If you want to use this, then make sure you're copying that link or clicking that link, saving it to one of your slots and the CC, again, as I mentioned, get a Flame Flinger, get yourself a uh, Dragon Rider, get yourself some Balloons, a Rage and a Freeze, and you are all set. You are good to go. And just because it's more of a tradition at this point, we are going to put a replay in of me smashing Pussy's face. So we've got our balloons coming in at 5 and 7. Flame Fling is going to be getting a very simple Town Hall takedown here. I love that Flame Fling. It's such a great addition to the game. Queen over at 3.30 and she's going to move in towards the scatter shot. And again, we're looking to just build some really, really nice loon pathing here. So Queen stepping forward. We haven't had to use a Rage on it yet. We don't need to for a little bit yet. The scatter shot's not really posing too much of a problem. 
and it will go down once the skellies have all gone. Flame Fung is still working in towards the Town Hall, so we are going to need to use our Skeleton spell to get that Town Hall activated. We've got no other way around it. It is what it is. But you know what? The Skelly spell isn't going to really add any more value throughout the attack anyway. If we're looking at the base, the only other time I would say Skeleton spells are really, really useful is if you're looking to try and tank the Queen against a single Inferno or maybe the Warden. Something like that. That's the only time I would say that the Skeleton Spell would come in handy outside of uh, the Town Hall activation. Okay, so we've got the Queen busting through that wall. Super Wall Breaker saves the day, saves her... Sh she got one last shot off because she's a Wall Breaker at heart, isn't she? This is what the Queen is. And we've got another Wall Break coming in to open up that middle part to try and give us access to that core Multi Inferno. Flame Flinger is working away at the Town Hall still. Queen has got the CC on her. We get the Headhunters and the Archers rushing in. Now, Tama throws everything up, so if you can, if you're in a position where the Headhunters and the Archers do rush ahead of the Hound, freeze up. That way the Queen can easily snipe the Headhunters, and she can take out the Hound at leisure, basically. It makes it so, so much easier. Town Hall's gone, and the Queen is now going to move in towards the Multi. Now, this is, again, you'll notice I'm only just dropping the Lala, and we've got, like, 50-ish seconds left. So, another classic example of Big Veil being really, really slow at dropping that Lalo in. I was, I was entering the Queen charge, let's face it guys, it was a fun charge. Single goes down before it can do any more damage to the Queen. Now, Flame Flinger does its job and now the Flame Flinger pops. And we get those balloons and the Dragon Rider coming in to meet the rest of the attack. Moving in from around about 7 o'clock-ish. RC coming in quite late. And yeah... Just a really nice, simple takedown. We've swagged quite a lot here. So we've swagged a Freeze and an Invis, which for a Queen Charge, trust me guys, that's quite a lot of swag because typically you will need a lot of spells to keep that Queen alive and kicking. But yeah, oh, of course, the RC ability. How could I forget that? So yeah, really, really nicely executed attack. Again, quite late on the Lolo, but if anything, I suppose it does show that a late deployment on the Lolo doesn't mean a fail. That was a 50-ish second Lalo. Don't be like Big Veil. Vale. Try and give yourself at least, at very least, a minute. Ideally about a minute and a half for that Lalo to work its way through. And there we have it, guys. That is my Queen Charge Lalo guide. So, again, big thank you to Exorcist for this army composition. Exorcist of Tribe Gaming has been using this in Legends. I uh, actually saw it in an Itsu video and had to give it a try. And uh, figured, you know what, there's not an actual full breakdown guide of this attack, so I'm going to make one. I'll make one and hopefully benefit you guys as well. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button. Also drop a comment to let me know if you've tried this and if you've actually had any luck with it. Not that it's luck, it's pure skill when it comes to you guys, I know that. And of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. As you'll know, I do pretty much one or the other every single day, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out. <laughs>